Jersey TV. Can you imagine a world without the Beatles? The Beatles were a huge influence on modern Western music. They experimented. They broke down doors. What was possible with voices and instruments, and they shaped the future of Western music. Everything sounded the same in the 50s, in the early 60s, and then the British invasion, spearheaded by the Beatles, hit the West. But the Beatles wouldn't have been what they were without help. They were discovered by a man named Brian Epstein, who heard them in a little basement club in Liverpool called the Cavern Club. They were scruffy. They wore leather. They goofed around on stage, chewed gum, did all kinds of crazy stuff. And Brian Epstein would be the one who would put them in those suits and present them to the world. Then they met George Martin, their producer, who, again, corralled that talent and gave them access to one of the finest studios in the world at Abbey Road. Can you imagine a world without the Apostle Paul? Everything we believe today, our expectation, a revelation of what Christ did, our expectation to be snatched away from this earth comes through the Apostle Paul. But there was a world in which there was not an Apostle Paul. Even subsequent to the death of Jesus Christ, his death and tomb and his resurrection, there was a Pharisee called Saul, but there was not yet an Apostle Paul. But even after he was apprehended by the glorified Christ on the road to Damascus, he was a scruff. He had a monumental task in front of him in the world of Israel. There was already an established band in town, and that was the circumcision. Paul had a new sound new vibrations, new instruments, new compositions, lyrics that had never been heard before. But Paul needed help. He needed someone to represent him, Brian Epstein, and present him, George Martin. And he found that in one person, and that was Peter the apostle who was closest to the Lord Jesus Christ, the one to whom our Lord gave the keys to the kingdom. I want to look at an incident in Peter's life. And you're going to wonder at first, what does this have to do with Paul? Oh, (laughs) this was so important for Paul that without this event, which on the surface has nothing to do with Paul, Paul could never have gotten a leg up and he would have been assassinated on maybe not day one, but day three. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. Now a certain man in Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion of a squadron called Italian. This man is not a Jew. He's a man of the nations, an Italian, devout and fearing God. He was a God-fearer. There were two types of proselytes in those days. Your run-of-the-mill proselyte, the word meaning toward comer. These were those who just were inclined toward the God of Israel, and then there were God-fearers. These were the ones who actually practiced Judaism. Cornelius was a God-fearer, devout and fearing God with his entire house, doing many alms to the people and beseeching God continually. He perceived in a vision, as if about the ninth hour of the day, a messenger of God entering to him and saying to him, Cornelius. Now he, looking intently at him, this is a man, this is a messenger of God, I'm assuming a celestial messenger who, like Gabriel, like Michael, took flesh, came into his room, and he looking intently at him and becoming affrightened, because 
this was a miraculous manifestation, said, What is it, Lord? Now he said to him, Your prayers and your alms ascended for a memorial in front of God. And now send men to Joppa. Now Cornelius is in Caesarea on the seacoast. And Joppa is a few kilometers south also on the seacoast of Israel. Send men to Joppa and send after a certain Simon, who is surnamed Peter. This man is lodging with a certain Simon, a tanner, whose house is beside the sea. Simon is lodging with Simon. Now as the messenger who was speaking to him came away, summoning two of the domestics and a devout soldier of those who waited on him, and unfolding it all to them, he dispatches them to Joppa. Head down south, down the coastal road, and go to Joppa. On the morrow, as they are journeying and drawing near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray. Oh, this is the timing of God. The timing of God is exquisite. God is preparing this whole incident, piece by piece by piece. He's already called Saul on the road to Damascus in the previous chapter, chapter 9. But Peter doesn't know anything about that. Cornelius doesn't know anything about that. And at this point, Peter doesn't know anything about Cornelius. And Cornelius didn't know anything about Peter until the angel of the Lord, the messenger of the Lord, appeared to him. And God is doing all this in the space of, of a day. In the case of Saul being called in the space of a few weeks, possibly a few months. On the morrow, as they are journeying and drawing near the city, the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour of the day. Now he became ravenous and he wanted to taste food. Now while they are preparing it, an ecstasy came on him. And he is beholding heaven open and a certain utensil descending as a large sheet with four edges being let down to earth. Utensil is a strange translation here of the Greek word skios, which means instrument. In fact, it was used in Acts chapter 9 when the Lord told Ananias, Saul is a choice instrument of mine. So an instrument, a sheet as an instrument. This was an instrument being used by God at this time. Heaven open and a certain utensil instrument descending as a large sheet with four edges being let down on the earth in which belonged all the quadrupeds and reptiles of the earth and the flying creatures of heaven, all unclean creatures. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, sacrifice and eat. Yet Peter said, Far be it from me, Lord, for I never ate anything contaminating and unclean. And again, a second time, a voice came to him, what God cleanses, do not you count contaminating. Now this occurred thrice, three times, and straight away the utensil, the instrument, the sheet was taken up into heaven. Now as Peter was bewildered in himself as to what the vision which he perceived should be, lo, the men who have been dispatched by Cornelius asking the way through to the house of Simon, stand at the portal. As soon as this vision consummates, and Peter is wondering what it could mean, what it could be, there's a knock at the door. And the men who were dispatched by Cornelius, asking for Peter, where's Peter? We're looking for one. Simon, surnamed Peter. Verse 18, Acts 10, and shouting, they inquire to ascertain if Simon, surnamed Peter, is lodging in this place. They don't have an address. They just know he's in a house by the sea, and they're asking when they get to the town. They don't have an address. For all I know, there were no addresses back then. There's no GPS. They ask, they ask around, and they find him. Now, as Peter is engrossed, Concerned with the vision, the Spirit said to him, Lo, three men are seeking you. But rising, descend, and go with them, nothing doubting. Why would Peter doubt? Because these men were not Jews. Go with them. This reminds me of God's call to Abraham. 
leave your home, leave your city, go to a land which I will show you. Don't doubt. Just do it. For I have commissioned them. Now Peter, descending to the men, said, Lo, I am he whom you are seeking. What is the cause for which you are present? Now they say, Cornelius, a centurion, a man just and God-fearing, besides being attested by the whole nation of the Jews, they have to give Cornelius' credentials here because they know they're in virgin territory is apprised by a holy messenger. That's another point in their favor. To send after you to come into his house and to hear declarations from you. They don't know what the declarations are. Cornelius, who sent them, doesn't know what the declarations are. And at this point, Peter doesn't even know what the declarations are. But God knows what the declarations are. Verse 23, calling them in then, he lodges them. Now on the morrow, on rising, he came away together with them, and some of the brethren from Joppa came with him. Some of the brethren from Joppa came with him. Why? Because Peter needed witnesses. Peter needed a defense, and you're going to see this in a little bit, as to why he would go to a house of a Gentile, and why, in fact, he had lodged Gentiles. Peter was walking on the moon. On the morrow, he entered into Caesarea. Now, Cornelius was hoping for them, calling together his relatives and intimate friends, why wouldn't you be confident if you had been visited by a celestial messenger? He calls his friends, calls his relatives to meet the great apostle. Now as Peter came to enter, Cornelius meeting with him, falling at his feet, worships. Yet Peter raises him, saying, Rise, I myself also am a man. And conversing with him, he entered and is finding many come together. Besides, he averred to them, you are versed in the fact how illicit it is, here it is, how illicit it is for a man who is a Jew to join or come to another tribe. And God shows me not to say that any man is contaminating or unclean. When did God show him that? The night before. Without that, Peter would not have gone. He would have refused flat out. Wherefore, without gainsaying also, being sent after, I came. I am inquiring to ascertain, then, on what account you send after me. And Cornelius averred, saying, four days ago, unto this hour, was I fasting, and at the ninth hour praying in my house and lo a man stood before me in splendid attire and he is averring Cornelius your prayer is hearkened to and your alms are brought to remembrance in God's sight send then into Joppa and call for Simon who is surnamed Peter he is lodging in the house of Simon a tanner beside the sea forthwith then I send to you besides you do ideally in coming along thank you thank you now then, we are all present in God's sight to hear all that you have been bidden by the Lord. Now Peter, opening his mouth, said, Of a truth, <laughs> I am grasping that God is not partial. But in every nation, he who is fearing him and acting righteously is acceptable to him. In every nation. Verse 36 of the word he dispatches to the sons of Israel, bringing the evangel of peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You are aware the declarations coming to be down the whole of Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism with John heralds. Jesus from Nazareth, as God anoints him with Holy Spirit and power, who passed through as a benefactor and healer of all those who were tyrannized over by the adversary. The people listening to him are spellbound. And Peter 
is under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He's being controlled completely by the Spirit of God. Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, who passed through as a benefactor and healer of all those who are tyrannized over by the adversary, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he does, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they assassinate also, hanging him on a pole. This one, God rouses the third day and gives him to become disclosed, not to the entire people, but to witnesses who have been selected before by God, to us who ate and drank together with him after his rising from among the dead. And he charges us to herald to the people and to certify that this one is he who is specified by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To this one are all the prophets testifying. Everyone who is believing in him is to obtain the pardon of sins through his name. The circumcision gospel. Verse 44. While Peter is still speaking these declarations, the Holy Spirit falls on all those hearing the word. Every single person. His Cornelius' his intimates, his relatives, those he sent to Joppa, the people who came from Joppa, to witness this upon whom the Holy Spirit was probably already on, the Spirit falls on all those hearing the word. And amazed were the believers of the circumcision who ever came together with Peter, seeing that on the nations also the gratuity of the Holy Spirit has been poured out. But didn't Peter know? that the Holy Spirit would be poured out through Israel to the other nations? Yes, but the amazement was that the Holy Spirit came upon these men without baptism. Not just men, but everyone in the room. This went against what Peter himself preached in Acts 2.38, Repent! and be baptized for the pardon of your sins, and then the gratuity of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And then the gratuity of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. As Peter is speaking without baptism, the Holy Spirit descends on everyone in the room. That is what amazed Peter and those who came up to Caesarea with him. For they heard them speaking in languages and magnifying God. Then Peter answered, there could not be anyone to forbid water. See, he hurries now. Peter hurries now to get the water out because he's, he's walking on the moon. This is new territory. This has never happened before. That the gratuity of the Holy Spirit has fallen upon people of the nations apart from an important mediation of Israel, namely baptism. First, the sheet coming down from heaven, now entering into the house of a Gentile with other Gentiles present, and then the Holy Spirit falling upon people without the mediation of baptism, without the laying on of hands, without anything, independent of Israelite mediation. There cannot be anyone to forbid water so that these are not to be baptized. In other words, bring the water. There's no way we're not going to baptize these people who obtain the Holy Spirit, even as we. This was shocking to Peter. And it never could have happened were it not for the astonishing vision of the night before of God declaring things which were unclean heretofore to be clean. Now he bids them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is not the Great Commission, by the way. 
at the end of Matthew chapter 28, Jesus Christ says that you will go into all the nations baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Who do they baptize in the name of here? Jesus Christ. This is not that. The Great Commission has not happened yet. Jesus Christ, before he left from the Mount of Olives to go back to heaven, gives them the Great Commission, but they knew that it was a thing of the future. Because none of them went to all the nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That was a specific formula, if you will, that Jesus Christ, their Lord, gave to them before he ascended into heaven. This was not that. This is a one-off. You're going to see this. This is a one-off. They baptize them in the name of Jesus Christ. This is not the great commission. Then they ask him to stay some days. Chapter 11. Now, verse 1. The apostles and the brethren who are of Judea hear that the nations also receive the word of God. Meanwhile, back in Jerusalem. <laughs> now, when Peter went up into Jerusalem, those of the circumcision doubted him saying that you entered to men having uncircumcision and you ate with them? Verse 3, that was verse 3 of chapter 11. Now Peter begins and expounded it to them consecutively. I was in Joppa, I was praying, I came to be in an ecstasy, and he goes through the whole thing again. Talks about the men who came. And then he relates how we went into the house of Cornelius. And in verse 15 of chapter 11, Peter says, Now as I begin to speak, the Holy Spirit falls on them. As I begin to speak, the Holy Spirit falls on them, even as on us also in the beginning. In the beginning. This is another beginning for Peter. Now I'm reminded of the declarations of the Lord as he said that John indeed baptizes in water, yet you shall be baptized in Holy Spirit. If then God gives them the equal gratuity to us also when believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I able to forbid God? Now on hearing these things, they are quiet and glorify God saying, quote, consequently, to the nations also God gives repentance unto life. Those indeed then who are dispersed from the affliction which is occurring over Stephen pass through as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, speaking the word, verse 19. Let me start this verse again. This is critical. Verse 19. Those indeed then who are dispersed from the affliction which is occurring over Stephen pass through as far as uh, their inspired by this they're excited by this new move of the spirit they think maybe this is it maybe this is the great commission they don't know for sure it's not i can tell them that now but they don't know that at the time they pass through as far as phoenicia and cyprus and antioch speaking the word to no one except to jews only what in the world There's a hand stopping them from heralding to the nations. In spite of this that just happened, this miraculous series of events, when a whole houseful of, quote, dogs, quote, infidels, although reverent infidels, God-fearing, men and women of the nations, in spite of them receiving the Holy Spirit at the mere word of Peter, they still do not go to anyone but Jews because this is not for them. This is for someone else. Verse 20, now some of them were the Cyprian men and the Cyrenians who, coming into Antioch, spoke to Hellenists also. This is the, the dispersion. And evangelizing to them the Lord Jesus. The only evangel in town right now is the evangel of the circumcision. And the hand of the Lord was with them, besides a vast number who believed turned back to the Lord. Apparently some had believed that Jesus was the Christ, but they were kind of thrown off by the crucifixion. 
they became lukewarm, backslid a little bit. But because of this excitement and the Holy Spirit coming on these people of the nations, they thought we better get on it because we're supposed to bless the nations according to God, to our forefather Abraham. Verse 22, Now the account concerning them is heard in the ears of the Ecclesia which is in Jerusalem, and they delegate Barnabas, a Jew, they delegate Barnabas to Antioch, who, coming along and perceiving the grace of God, the grace of God is acting here. This is not yet the transcendent grace of God that we know. It's the grace of God to prepare the heart of Peter for something new. who, coming along and perceiving the grace of God, rejoiced and entreated all with purpose of heart to be remaining in the Lord. Something's happening. There's electricity. There's excitement. It's called the Holy Spirit. It's undeniable because this happened with the chief, the man, the chief of the apostles, Peter. And now he's a different person. He comes back from Caesarea via Joppa. He's a different person. Now, concerning Barnabas, and here we go, and they delegate Barnabas to Antioch. This would be a new outpost, Antioch of Syria, the new outpost, who coming along, Barnabas coming along and perceiving the grace of God, Barnabas rejoiced and entreated all with purpose of heart to be remaining in the Lord, for he was a good man, Barnabas was, and full of Holy Spirit and faith, and a considerable throng was added to the Lord. Verse 25, now he came away to Tarsus to hunt Saul. The first thing on his mind, because he knew about Saul already, I'm not sure how, we don't know how. Well, he was a fellow Tarsian, Barnabas was. Barnabas and Saul were from the same city. He knew of Saul, and he knew what had happened with Saul. And he went to Tarsus to hunt Saul. And finding him, he led him to Antioch. Antioch is Liverpool. Antioch of Syria will become the hotbed of a move of the Spirit that would be the beginning of the announcement of the gospel of Paul. It would be the Holy Spirit's version of the British invasion. There would be new music. But what was absolutely necessary was the support of Peter, the chief apostle. Paul needed him like the Beatles needed Brian Epstein and George Martin. Without those two, they never would have been what they became. As much as we don't like it, as much as we see Saul, who would become Paul as a maverick, as a man who can do any job in the world, he needed the support of Jerusalem. I'm going to end this show by telling you why. Go back one chapter to chapter 9, and we're in verse 23. Saul is just called on the road to Damascus. He's in Damascus. He's staying with Ananias. He's blind. Scales fall from his eyes. Ananias feeds him. Paul, Saul, is strengthened. And he came to be with the disciples in Damascus some days. Now amazed are all who are hearing. And they said, isn't this not the one who in Jerusalem ravages those who are invoking this name? And for this he had come here, that he may be leading them bound to the chief priests. Yet Saul was more invigorated and threw the Jews dwelling in Damascus into confusion. Through the who? Through the Jews dwelling in Damascus into confusion. Deducing that this one is the Christ. In these days, in these early days, some of the Jews believed that Jesus was the Christ. Some of them did not. And already Saul is heralding with great boldness. Verse 23, Now as a considerable number of days were fulfilled, the Jews consult to assassinate him. There it is. There it is. Verse 23, The Jews consult to assassinate him. Already, 
This is day what? Day four? Day five? The Jews are ready to kill him already. And their whole modus operandi was to get rid of this troublemaker. And I'm going to show you tomorrow in Acts chapter 21, even Jews who were zealous for the law wanted to kill this man constantly. If this man did not have the acceptance of Peter and through Peter, James and John, and through them, the other leaders of the Jerusalem Ecclesia, who had great influence among the believing Jews, at least. But it was the believing Jews who beat Paul five times, beaten by the Jews, and wanted to kill him. The believing Jews, because of his message. Haven't even gotten there yet, but it was because of his message. But this is just his call. This is just the fact that he's heralding Jesus as the Christ. But he is a rogue. He's a outsider. I mean, he hasn't even gone to the nations yet, and they're already ready to kill the guy. He hasn't even gone to the nations yet. Oh, but he would go to the nations. And Peter, bringing back the vision of the sheet coming down from heaven, would say, this guy's all right. Yes, this is a work of the Spirit. And the whole time, even 14 years from now, when Paul goes to Jerusalem to submit the evangel he's been heralding among the nations to Peter and to the Jerusalem Ecclesia, Peter never forgot that. He never forgot it. He never forgot what God did with Cornelius. And you know, Cornelius, as far as we know, was the only non-Jew Peter reached. Peter, the guy with the keys to the kingdom. Cornelius was the only man of the nations that Peter ever brought the circumcision gospel to, as far as we know. This was 99.9% .9 for Saul. And Barnabas was the liaison. Barnabas was there when Peter returned to Jerusalem from the Joppa Caesarea experience. Barnabas was there. This was the link. This was Ivan Vaughn, the mutual friend of Paul McCartney and John Lennon, who introduced Paul McCartney to John Lennon. Ivan Vaughn was the go-between. Barnabas now is the go-between between Peter and Paul He was in on the excitement after Peter returned from that epic trip following that magnificent vision, and he went straight away to hunt Saul. I love the way that's worded. And he went to Antioch to hunt Saul, and now Antioch becomes Liverpool. Antioch now becomes the headquarters of a new movement that would change the world.